Welcome back to part two of Heart Health with Michelle. I'm with Dr. Thomas Dayspring. He is in a, he has so much wealth of knowledge um, and so much experience in clinical lipidology. And I'm so excited that he's back again talking about lipids. Um, we are going to go into the lipid panel and explain kind of what to look for, when to look for something a little bit more advanced than your routine um, and really kind of understand it a little bit more. So I'm so excited that you're here with us again. Thank you so much for your time and ex- your expertise. So tell us what, it, what you get, you get your in, you go to your annual physical appointment, you get your lipid panel. What should I look for? Of course, as we just mentioned in the previous uh, little speech, lipids are a major coronary atherosclerosis, development of plaque, hardening of the arteries, risk factor. Most people get that checked out by their doctor's order, something called a lipid panel or a lipid profile. It's actually a series of several tests. And by looking at each number in that panel, a clinician gets the idea, "Uh uh-oh, there is a lipid abnormality here, which is going to predispose this person to heart attack, strokes, and wherefore we're going to do whatever we can with lifestyle suggestions or drugs to get it under control. A quick introduction to that word called atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. That occurs when cholesterol, which is traveling in your bloodstream, leaves the bloodstream and enters the artery wall. And over time, it will build up cholesterol deposits in that artery wall, which is really what leads to the hardening of the artery or the blockage of the artery or the inducement of clots in the artery, which is what you never want to have. So there's a little bit of science involved with this. Lipids are in a class of chemicals called oils. All of you know oil does not float in water. If I took olive oil and poured it in a glass of water, it floats. It doesn't circulate. So how do lipids like cholesterol or triglycerides pass through your plasma? Because your plasma, the fluid that is part of your blood, is basically water. Oil and water don't mix. So luckily when our human body was evolved, they had to develop what I call a lipid transportation vehicle. So what evolution has done is it groups clumps of cholesterol molecules and triglyceride molecules together. That's a big oil droplet. But to make it soluble that it can circulate in water, they wrap it with a protein because proteins are soluble in water. So the only way lipids float in your bloodstream are in little dump trucks called lipoproteins. They're lipids surrounded by a protein. Now, if that dump truck, that protein surrounded collection of lipids leaves plasma and enters your artery wall, and it keeps doing it year after year, you're going to have atherosclerosis. Fortunately, if our bodies work correctly, the liver has a receptor that can grab those particles, remove them, bring them into the liver, where they are catabolized and used elsewhere. And of course, if the liver gets a hold of your lipids, your artery doesn't, so you're not gonna get atherosclerosis. So basically risk assessment comes down to a doctor saying, I have to see does this person have too many of the wrong type of lipoproteins carrying cholesterol in their plasma. Now, for those of us into the science, there are very specific, they're often called advanced tests that actually quantitate and qualify the different types of lipoproteins that are floating around. Most doctors don't look at that. That's where you may need a lipidologist or you have a very astute doctor who knows how to evaluate those. Most screening is done by looking not at lipoprotein concentrations per se, but these tests that you get in a lipid panel analyze how much cholesterol is inside the various lipoproteins or how much triglycerides which is the way the body carries fatty acids in our blood. And by looking at cholesterol concentrations or triglyceride concentrations, the doctor should be able to make an educated guess that, oh my goodness, you have the wrong type of lipoproteins. You have the type that have the ability to crash your artery wall and cause atherosclerosis. So very quickly, the tests on a lipid profile are total cholesterol, something called LDL cholesterol, something called HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and something that unfortunately not a people really look at, and I'm going to convince you if you're only going to do lipid panels, this is the most important thing, something called non-HDL cholesterol. 
So very quickly, if there are two distinct families of lipoproteins that carry all our cholesterol, and they are classified by they have distinct structural proteins on our surface. There's two major families. One family is, has a what's called a beta protein, ApoB on it. The other family is an alpha lipoprotein. It has ApoA1. Apo is the protein that wraps it. The only ones you really have to know about are the ApoB particles because they're the bad guys. They're the ones that do have potential to crash your artery wall. The um, HDL guys, the ApoA1 guys, uh, perform a lot of functions, but they don't go dump cholesterol in your artery wall. So let's go. Total cholesterol is the cholesterol. It's in every lipoprotein, no matter what it is, ApoB, ApoA1, that's floating in your plasma. <clears throat> About 80% of total cholesterol is in those potentially bad ApoB particles. So if your total cholesterol is elevated, right away as a good doctor who understands lipids, I know, uh-oh, there's going to be too many of those bad ApoB particles. It's not the greatest correlator, but it does correlate. That's why guidelines would tell you, worry if your total cholesterol is above 200. As a lipidologist, especially if you have any diabetic tendencies, I'm going to say, you got a total cholesterol above 150. I'm a little bit worried about you, but I'm going to look at better markers than total cholesterol. Okay. So total cholesterol, like I said, is the cholesterol in everything. Now let's look at the different classes of lipoproteins. Everybody has heard about LDLs. I don't call them bad, but too many people do because LDLs can perform several good functions too. And it's only bad if it decides to crash your artery wall. And uh, how do we know that or don't know it in a given person? So what the lipid panel shows you is something called LDL. Now LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. When they were first discovered, they put them in a centrifuge and they separated according to what's called their density or buoyancy. So low density, they sort of sunk towards the bottom of the tube, that centrifuge tube. So if I took all the LDL particles out of your blood and I analyzed collectively how much cholesterol they're carrying, that's your LDL cholesterol level. I told you total cholesterol is like a guesstimate of ApoB. LDL cholesterol is a much, much better guesstimate of do you have too many of those ApoB potentially artery crashing particles. So that's why that gets the main focus in the lipoprotein uh, analysis world or the lipid profile world. What your LDLC should be depends. Look, if you had a heart attack, <laughs> we have to make it super low. But if you're younger in life and we're diagnosing you before your heart attack, in general, the guidelines may say that LDLC ought to be well under 100. I would say for the average person, it should be under 80 milligrams per deciliter. And if you've had a heart attack, it should be well under 50 milligrams per deciliter. So that's what your LDL cholesterol is. I don't call it bad cholesterol. It's only bad if that LDL goes into your artery wall. If that LDL happens to be plucked out of plasma by your liver, the cholesterol goes back to the liver and is utilized elsewhere. So that's not a bad LDL. All right, the next thing you're going to get is HDL cholesterol, which you've been told, oh, that's the good cholesterol. And the reason it got that adjective next to it is because unlike the LDL or the ApoB dump trucks, it does not go into your artery wall and dump cholesterol. Basically, it is a miraculous lipoprotein that if any cell in your body has somehow obtained too much cholesterol or manufactured it, the HDL sucks it out of the cell and somehow gets it back to the liver where it cannot hurt you. And that's why it got the upper uh, appellation good. But here's the bad news with that. that. All the data that says high HDLC is great, low HDLC is not, comes from old studies where they never adjusted it for anything else. There are plenty of people with high HDL cholesterol who do get heart disease, especially women. And there are exceptions to the rule. There are people with low HDL cholesterol who never get atherosclerotic heart disease. Now, in general, if you go for a lipid panel and your HDLC is low, you should worry. You do need to step up and look at your LDL or your ApoB level. But there's no generalization that it's good or bad. That's silly.
The next marker you get in your lipid panel is going to be triglycerides. Triglycerides are three fatty acids that stuck together and they jump in that lipoprotein particle because that's energy that is brought to your cells so your muscles can move or it's brought to your fat cells where you store it for another day when you might need energy. All right. So triglycerides in general should be at a physiologic level. A physiologic trig, the guidelines will tell you under 150. As a lipidologist, I'm going to tell you well under 100, if not under 80, would be a thank you, Jesus type of triglyceride level. So uh, look very carefully at that triglyceride level. Sadly, it's the least understood or the most neglected parameter that one gets in a lip. Too many people say, oh, your LDL cholesterol is great. Your HDL cholesterol is great. I don't care about your triglycerides. No, no, no. Get another opinion immediately if anybody ever says that to you. Great news, too. Of all the lipid parameters, triglycerides are likely the most modifiable by lifestyle modifications oh, and everything. Mm -hmm. So, and it tends to be particularly bad in people with prediabetes, diabetes. It's often a harbinger of you're going to be a diabetic one day. So respect triglycerides and focus on the numbers I've just shown. Yeah. Well, the last well, thing. Sorry, just to, sit, to you, add one comment though, you mentioned something yeah. super important. Triglycerides are often neglected, but so important and known as an independent risk factor for heart disease, but it's also very linked with insulin resistance. And when we look at the research, insulin resistance is one is often 70% of people who have heart attacks are also insulin resistant. So we need to be checking that number too and giving it attention. So I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Thank Thank you. Indeed. Insulin resistance is just the medical terminology for what I hinted at pre-diabetes and diabetes. But as Michelle, I think just implied, actually, if you're testing for insulin resistance, that actually occurs before the sugar starts to go abnormal in the bloodstream. And subtle elevation of triglycerides can be the big signal that, oh boy, insulin resistance is coming on highly linked to blood pressure. It's just a bad bed. It hangs around with a lot of metabolic abnormalities. Finally, folks, I want you to pay most attention, and maybe your doctor isn't even looking at this, non-HDL cholesterol. Non-HDL cholesterol, what does that mean? Well, the title tells you what it means. It's the cholesterol that is not in an HDL particle. So if cholesterol is not in an HDL lipoprotein, it has to be in an ApoB containing lipoprotein. Those are the particles that have the master ability to crash your artery wall. So no matter what your total cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol is, if your non-HDL cholesterol is abnormal, you have too many of those ApoB particles. If it's borderline, you should ask your doctor, and maybe we'll talk about this in another podcast, measure apolipoprotein B, readily available in any lab in America and very cost effective. So non-HDL cholesterol, you can it's a free test if you have a lipid panel because all you do is you take that total cholesterol number, you subtract from it your HDL cholesterol number, bingo, that number is the cholesterol that is not in HDL particles. It's your ApoB cholesterol. Most of your ApoB particles are LDLs, but there are other ApoB particles that we all have to worry about. So what are your non-HDL cholesterol numbers? Ideally, if you have no other risk factors under 130, but if you have insulin resistance, you are known to have early atherosclerosis, hypertension, a bunch of other risk factors. I like to see it well under 100. If you've had a heart attack, I want it w well below 70 even. So look at that non-HDL cholesterol and never let anybody tell you, I don't worry about that. Yeah. Perfect. So. I love it. So much great information. You have so much knowledge, so much experience. You're amazing. I'm so glad that you came here today and spoke to us. Um, everyone should be following Dr. Tom Spring on doc at Dr. Lippitt at Twitter. And I really appreciate all of that knowledge. And I hope everyone is more proactive in their care. Look at your test results. Ask your doctor for a copy of it. Know your numbers. Take action. Be proactive and try to be take action today because the earlier you do it, 
the better. And teach your kids or your grandkids all of these healthy principles as well so we can catch it early and really help prevent heart disease from being the number one killer globally. Thank Amen. you so much for your time. Anything else you want to leave us with? Any any last tips? Any any last yeah, joke? One You're funny, great. <laughs> listen, what I really wanted to be in life is what my father was, a professional fireman. And he taught me early. I used to love running to a fire scene and he'd be there with the fire engines or whatever. But he always says, no, no, Tom, the most important people in the fire department is what we call the combustible department. Those are the firemen who go and inspect buildings, inspect things that are going to cause fires, because if they do their job well, you will never need a fire truck at your conflagration. So I look at lipidology, atherosclerosis, cardiology, preventive as looking early, early for risk factors of blood pressure and lipids and put out the fire long before it ever starts. I love it. Amazing analogy, amazing advice. I'm so glad that you were here. Thank you so much for your time and your knowledge. I appreciate it. Talk soon.